Ella Rigby would have been impossible to play with a string section. So they basically said at the end of August of 66, we're done. Right. And they went into the studios, and because they had been such a massive hit, EMI allowed them now to have their time. And when you consider that Please Please Me was recorded in, what, 14, 16 hours in one day, now they're into Sgt. Pepper, which took weeks to record. But the, the clock wasn't ticking as far as, you know, uh, how much time they consumed. But they had now reached a certain level. A lot of people say this was their greatest album ever. But there were a lot of people that said, what, the Beatles are done. They're drying up. Yeah. Where are they? We're, where we are haven't they? seen them in a couple of months. Right. And when they came back, it was kind of like The Wizard of Oz, where you went from black and white to full-blown color, psychedelic color at that. Um, and it was Paul's idea. Let me hand this off for a second. It was Paul's idea to create an alter ego. Bands in America like uh, Jefferson Airplane, which became Jefferson Starship, you know, Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show, they all had long names like that. Paul, on a plane trip home from Africa to London, says Salt Pep, Sergeant Pepper. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And they, the idea behind that was, let's not be the Beatles anymore, because the minute we think Beatles, okay, John's got to do this and George has to do that, let's be our alter egos. So you've got... The famous Billy Shears. What would you think if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Mmm, gonna try with a little help from my friends. Oh, I'm gonna hide with a little help from my friends. Yes, I get by with a little help from my friends. With a little help from my friends. Ringo Starr, Joe Cocker sang that song at Woodstock. Do you remember that? The great Joe Cocker who just left us? Anyways, weren't there two songs that were supposed to be on the album but got released early in, uh, right before Sgt. Pepper? It's because it was Christmas time. What he's talking about was, you know, EMI is a business. And even the record company has to make money. So... You know... Let me take you down, cause I'm going to Strawberry fields Nothing is real And nothing to get hung about Strawberry fields forever This was really about John's childhood and I've learned a couple things just recently A couple of the lyrics that you all know very well no one I think is in my tree. Someone just sold, John had a tree house. Oh, and wow. there was a piece of wood that this gentleman got to have. There's another author, Jude Sutherland Kessler, who's doing a nine series, yeah. yeah, you know Jude? And I got to do an hour with her on the John Lennon hour, which is uh, on beatles Arama. And she said she met the man, you know, and he's John probably singing about being up in that tree house. There's also one other anecdote that I just ran across, which is fascinating. Strawberry Fields was really a, 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 like an orphanage where young kids that didn't have families would be taken care of. And it was right near Men Love Avenue where John lived. And as a child, he used to run over there and go play because, you know, it was very fanciful and, and what have you. And me would say to John, always being the strict disciplinarian, she'd say to John, John, if they catch you going over that wall, they're going to arrest you. He goes, Mimi, come on. They're not, it's nothing they're going to hang you for. Nothing to get hung about. Strawberry fields forever. Right? While you're on that piano, I want to ask you yes, about sir. the ultimate collaboration, Lennon McCartney. We talked about that yesterday. This album, in my opinion, features <clears throat> the, the top of the tree. Yes. Collaboration. I read the news today. Oh, boy. About a lucky man who made the grave. And Paul had a completely different song. Woke up, fell out of bed, dragged gold across my head. Found my way upstairs and drank a cup. And looking up, I noticed I was like, <laughs> which ends with, <laughs> And then they said, George Martin. We want this ending like no one's ever heard. So George thought, 
I've got it. And he told all the orchestra to take your instrument, start from the lowest note you can, and build to the highest crescendo possible. 